Hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen, and as we proceed with our Power Stroke Cobra project, we're going to be doing the fan, the fan clutch, and the water pump. Um, we just don't want to take any chance with passing this on to the next owner and having an issue since the truck that this engine came out of met a concrete wall at a very high speed and smashed everything up. So we're going to get everything out of here. Now, for the experienced, hey, stick around. I'll tell you why. There's a, a couple items here that you might have heard that needed to be replaced and you used uh, the old parts. I'll explain why to get the new bolts put them in. I'll explain other items for you that are new. First time here. I made it real easy. Go down into the description and it has all my videos for our almost finished sensor videos. All the sensors on the 7.3. All of our Tech Talks 2022, 2023 and other interesting videos that uh, are done in my fashion. We're not out in a driveway with a cell phone making silly videos. This is where you get the information. So with that being said, let's move on here and show you a couple different ways to get this handled. So as you see here, when the truck came into the collision, busted this all up. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. Leave your belt on. So leave your belt on. Um, I take into account that you don't have a huge toolbox full of tools like I do, a big shop like I do. That's why we do it in this type of setting right here. So one of the ways of doing this is you can take a large wrench and put that onto the nut here. And you can go and then shock it by, by hitting this really hard. Just wham! Just nail her really hard. And that's usually enough to shock, shock the big nut in order to break it loose. So that's one of the ways of doing it. And when I'm talking about the big nut, this is what I mean right here. Put the wrench right on here and then give it a big knock and it's usually enough to knock it loose enough to get those threads so you can turn it off manually. The second way of doing this is going to be with a air chisel and you can run down to Harbor Freight and get these for 20 or 30 bucks. I didn't look at the pricing but they're pretty cheap. This is something that definitely if you have a good air compressor you want to add this to your collection of your tools. It becomes very invaluable working on all kinds of things on your 7.3 and well heck you can even knock off laster, plaster and lats with it so it's got many different uses but the other popular thing to do you get on top of the nut right here and you make a little, a tiny little incision with the air. So it has something to grip. And then what you do, get her loosened up and run her off. Now as you can see, I'm working with the cab off, so I'll give you the explanation next here. Now it doesn't make a difference at what point you do this but at this point it either has to be done or previously done. You're going to be working with fan shroud. Now there's going to be two bolts that go through that fan shroud on the newer 7.3s and on the older ones some of them are a little bit different but you get the gist okay. Remove the two bolts up on top on the fan shroud that connects to the radiator. Set those bolts aside, preferably put them in a bag, put them in a can, mark them, make sure that 
you don't set them somewhere where they get knocked. And then what you do, once again, keep the fan belt on, is you're gonna spin the fan. Don't remove the shroud, but you're gonna spin the fan. Keep an eye on it, keep a good hand on it. This is a two hand job here. Um, I know you're watching me and saying, well, you're holding, you know, the, the belt, but that's because I don't have the belt on here. Um, that flew off uh, somewhere on the highway when he hit the wall. But anyways, so turn it and keep one hand. So what you don't want to have happen is that all of a sudden comes off and then you end up smashing your radiator. We don't want that. So keep two hands on it. Now if you have a water bottle that sits over here, that's uh, three number 10s, just take the bolts out, kind of slide that water bottle in over here. You don't have to completely remove it. But slowly slide it off and you're gonna start seeing this get a little bit wobbly. You're, you're there, make sure you keep a grip on it. Real carefully. Get her off of there while you're holding it. Pull the fan shroud and the fan out all at the same time. And set her aside. So now we got that off, that is out of the way. Now we're on to the next item. Now go ahead and remove your belt or your serpentine belt. And that's done simply by putting in your half inch right here. And you just go through and turn that, that loosens it up. Remove your belt at that point in time. If, if you want, you can leave it hang, but it's just gonna be dangling in a way. It's gonna be a bit of a pain in the, in the arse. So in this particular area, what we do not wanna be doing is going after this with an impact. What we do want to do here is just use your regular wrench, break everything loose first. If you have one of these and you're experienced with it, you can hold a little bit of air pressure on it, break it loose, and then bring out the bolts. But if you go after it with an impact, you have a high possibility of breaking off a bolt at some point in time then you have to fart around trying to get it out of the timing cover and it just ends up being a real disaster. So just take your time, do it right. So let's get this off. I've already pre-loosened everything. So we got this. So we got the belt guide here. Make sure you put the bolts someplace that they're not gonna get kicked or lost. So now before we move, remove this water pump right here, let's uh, get the clamps off and get the tubes disconnected. That's how you do that. Now these are gonna be frozen in pretty good. So you just Jiggle them back and forth. Make sure you don't wreck it by putting too much pressure on there, but jiggle it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you hear it crack loose. And get that off. And then let's go ahead and right here, let's get one inch. This particular clip right here, you just press down that tab, remove it, get it up out of the way so it doesn't get smashed. This is a number 19. Get that sensor out of there.
This is the thermostat. This is the thermostat right here. Get that off. Now, looking down inside here, when you get your new water pump, take mental note. Now, the, 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 the gaskets are different, but just take a note of which gasket is in the housing. And this one is a square. Get that popped out of there, and then you can see the gasket is right here. Don't forget it. Don't put it on the bottom when you reinstall it. So on the bottom here, we're going to take this off before we remove the water pump itself. Now this right here is a short extension, and this all depends on the type of piping that you have. Uh, this is a multi-use pump fits several different vehicles. Uh, there is also an adapter like this right here. Uh, all depends, but the point here is that this is a number 12. And the kit is gonna come with new bolts. Now we are ready to take off the main pump itself. Doesn't make a difference which bolts you start with. Just make sure you don't use an impact and bust them off. And these are all number 10s. Keep track of your bolts as far as the length of the bolts so you know where to put the new ones back in. And voila, out that comes. Now this doesn't meet, need much prep. All we're gonna do is just take a, a, a very fine Scotch-Brite. In case you weren't aware, there's uh, four different types of coarseness with these, but uh, basically the red one right here is perfect. And let's just go and get off the left behind material. So now that you get it all cleaned off, we got a nice, perfect, brand new surface to work with. Nothing fancy here, I'm just uh, using some soap cleaner. Don't need to go after it with uh, brake clean or anything like that. We really don't want that getting into the engine system. So use something that is uh, very very, very safe, eco-safe to your engine. Now, if you get to this stage of the game and you see a whole bunch of scraping marks right here or a bunch of pitting or it looks like somebody dropped 
hot welds in here and then pop them back out and it's all pitted. This timing cover is done. Just stop. I know it sucks, but you had cavitation problem for some odd strange reason, which is really, really rare on a 7.3. But nonetheless, you had a cavitation problem and putting it back into service, you're gonna end up with overheating issues. You're gonna have a problem with sooner or later that this case is gonna leak through to the inside, get into the oil. Then you're just down the road with a, you know, just it, it's the worst scenario and you will wreck your engine. Um, you're gonna have to go through and put a new timing case cover on. So let's discuss bolts at this point. Now in this particular application, depending on who you purchased and what company of water pump that you have or water pump that you're gonna install and down in the description is gonna be the type of water pump that I always use, which I have fantastic life service out of. They do a really great job and that's Gates. But always replace your bolts. Do not use the old bolts. These bolts have a certain stretch to them and you're holding on the timing cover. Part of these are responsible for holding and sealing the timing cover. If you get chrome bolts, you got it. don't use these. Throw these away, put them in with the rest of your bolt collection. Do not use chrome bolts. These do not have the stretch. Like these metal one or like these black ones do, the, these are a different type of rod when these are made and pressed. You have to get the black ones. These are the ones that heat and cool and heat and cool and still hold their same amount of pressure onto the timing cover. So once again, chrome, get them out of there. Don't use those. Also, Japan, China, Malaysia, India, they have a really cheap black bolt, but you'll see it because on the end, it won't be marked with the metric sizing. So then you'll know you have a really cheap one and those definitely don't use, throw them in the garbage. So the reason why it's so critical to use brand new bolts and to have the correct ones in here is that these bolts come through and keep this section sealed along with, and I've shown on many occasions that right here, this is where your oil goes through to your high pressure oil pump. And if you do not use new bolts and you use the old ones and it gives up its torque over time, then this starts leaking right here. Then you get air into your high pressure oil pump and one of the reasons, there's a good handful of reasons, but one of the reasons why at idle, when you start up your 7.3 and it gets warmed up and the idle goes up and down and up and down and up and down. I'm just talking 50 RPMs, up and down, up and down, up and down. Not the clugging, glug, 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 glug. That's an IPR thing. Uh, ICP thing, cam sensor, but right here, you get a little bit of air in there and then it starts leaking down. Your uh, high pressure oil pump reserve doesn't get full correct to the top that it should. And like I said, once again, air gets in here, idle up, idle down, idle up, idle down. It's crucial that you get brand new bolts. Once again, down in the description is where I get my bolts from. And if you go this route here, you'll be able to just easily order them. Gates makes an excellent water pump and they also include a excellent square gasket. Why is this important? This is a Felpro model, and this is a round gasket. It does not make 
good contact and good pressure contact over time and will leak. So if you get yourself a gasket and it was just a matter that this was leaking but the pump didn't need to be replaced, don't use a round gasket. Make sure that you get a gasket that is a square gasket. It seals better and it seals for the lifetime of usually the pump itself. Once again, the round one will fail. All right, so let's go ahead and put this on. I've already uh, put the gasket on. That's uh, very, very self-explanatory. Don't need to go into much explanation there. Do not put oil on the bolts. We don't want to over torque these. And remember when you take this off, make sure that you mentally note where each size of the bolt came from. You're going to have three really long ones, one that is about a third less in size than the three long ones, and then you're going to have the rest of these are shorts. So, long one, long one, long one, middle size, right here. Short, short, short. Short and short. Let's not be going after this with an impact. Let's get them turned in first. Make sure that they're all the way turned in snug. So we have all the bolts ran in, they're all snug. Usually down here you don't have to worry about blowing out the bolt holes with any type of air, but if it makes you feel better, go ahead, take some compressed air, blow out each of the bolt holes. That way you don't have any torque situations where one of the bolts just doesn't quite torque right. And even with the low PSI that the cooling system runs at, she could leak so not necessarily necessary but if you're doing it for the first time would be a bad idea so torquing and sequence most of the time people just run the bolts on in and you know down the road we go there is a little bit of a sequence here because the way that the timing cover is held on and we don't want anything behind the timing cover to leak because once again 20 30 year old trucks if you haven't replaced your seals back there and put new rtv on there's a chance that it could leak so this part is really important what we're going to do what we're going to do here is start out at 10 foot pounds got to click there I have a click there. I have a click here.
There's my click. This is the important one right here. Click. 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 And click. Now we're going to take this up to 18 foot pounds and we're going to finish her up. So let's hit this. Got the click. 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 The click. The important one. Click. Click. And click. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wait about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. While we're waiting that 10, 15 minutes to do a double click here. Because that gasket is going to compress a little bit and what we don't want to have happen is one of these bolts to be a little bit off. So we want to do a double click here, but once again, 10, 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and get this inlet installed. Go ahead, wire brush. And then if you want to use the liquid thread locker or a liquid sealer, don't use thread locker. Sorry about that. Or if you just want to use some tape, go ahead, use some tape, but let's not get crazy because what we don't want to do is screw it in here and have it expand and crack. Now this here, I, you know, if you want to use a closed end wrench, you want to use a extra long socket, you want to use an open end wrench, this, this, this you don't have to be fussy about. You're gonna feel it start getting tight and just kind of bring it on over, kind of feel, kind of feel out, uh, let's, let's say a, a 30 foot pound. There, that, that should be more than adequate. That's not gonna leak ever again. Next we have the temperature sensor here. Go ahead, use some liquid thread sealer or this right here, this Teflon tape that I'm using actually is for automotive use. But either which way, get that on there. And we don't want to go crazy here and bust a sensor, so just run her in. And when you start feeling it to get tight, then stop. And when I mean start feeling it to get tight, 10 uh, I should say 20, 20 foot pounds of torque kind of tight. You don't want to bust the sensor off. It's no big deal if it, it has a small leak after the fact. You can just come back in, give it a little bit more tightening. So it's no big deal if, if that part of it isn't stressed enough into the aluminum. It's just the point is you don't want to bust this aluminum housing. Then let's make sure that you got it plugged in and she clicks on there. So let's come back now and make sure that everything is properly torqued, that we didn't have one that's kind of loose and the rest of them are tight and then you're gonna have a leak as soon as you show up at work and you see it dripping out from underneath your truck. So double click. See, right there was a loose one. That's exactly what we don't want to have happen. Click, 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 and I'm just going to work my way to the end. Click, 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 click. So this one here and this one here was just a tad bit loose. So what I'm going to do just for safety's sake, I am going to come back to this after we get done with the two ports.
So this port right here and this port right here love to leak. Got to clean them. Clean them up really, really good. Now, if you clean it up, reinstall it, and it still leaks a little bit, these need to go into the trash can or your metal pile. Go get yourself a brand new one or run yourself over to a reputable diesel site. Get yourself one of those aluminum billet ones that, you know, in whatever color flavor that you want, but either which way, don't try to take it apart and put a bunch of sealant underneath it. it, it it's just shot, they're cheap, throw it away, put it in the metal pile, and uh, you'll just be much more happier with your 7.3 and the runnability of it. And you don't have to worry about losing all kinds of fluid later on down the line. Now to me, it's a good idea that the old thermostat here, if we've gone to this point, in my opinion, thermostats are cheap. Just go ahead and get yourself a good brand new thermostat and install it. That water pump's going to be in here for many, many miles and you don't want this to fail because you used an old part. Just go right ahead, get yourself the new thermostat. Now, don't forget, do not put the gasket underneath. I've seen it over and over and over again. Put the thermostat in there, square gasket. If you have a round gasket, it's the wrong gasket. Square gasket goes on top, fits in there real nice. Set that on there and these bolts, it's just fine to reuse them. Go through, wire brush them, make sure that they are nice and clean. Do not put any type of oil on them. Do not put any type of thread locker on them. At some point, you got to get them out of there. Run them down snug, 18 foot-pounds, now there's some things you can get away with without using a torque wrench. But this is one of those situations where you really need to invest into a torque wrench. It's just going to save you some uh, tool throwing time. The better torqued and the more even torqued that what we're working on here is at is the less chance that it's going to leak. Um, experienced guys out there, they, they can kind of feel this stuff in their hand. But if you're watching this and you're new and you've never done it before, if you're going to be doing more work in the future, get yourself a good torque wrench. Now we're going to double check this again. Got a click. 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 Click, click. All right, so now I'm finally happy. We had to do it three times. Uh, very critical that we just did what we did so we didn't have a singular loose bolt. On the second time even, we had two bolts that were loose. Don't rush past some of these items. Make sure you do it the first time, the right time. So now we're good. We are really good. Now we're going to move on to the bottom. This one here, too, is prone to leak. Same as the top one. If you install it and put the new gasket on it and it leaks, 
and it's all the way torqued down, time to see the garbage can. It's not a problem with the water pump, it has nothing to do with that. This is warped or it's rusted beyond what it's capable of. It's time to, it's time to get rid of it. Now this one here is a very small little gasket. It's not a square gasket. It is actually flat up against this insert and round on the outside. That's how you know you got it on correctly. Now these right here need new bolts and they're normally going to come in the kit. If you did not get new bolts, run down to your hardware store and get yourself the correct automotive bolt or down to your auto store, whatever the case may be. Once again, do not put chrome in there. That is a completely different type of metal. This is a different situation. We don't have to worry about torquing this, just run it down tight, but you know, not to the point where you know it's bleeding oil out of it. Snug her up. Snug her up, then come back. Kind of kind of feel it in the hand. You just got done two or three times checking these bolts up in front. 20 foot pounds. There we go. Don't bust the housing, don't strip out the aluminum. If it leaks, don't go back after it with a wrench. If it's tight, it's tight. Time to get rid of that uh, adapter. All right, let's get the pulley back on here. Go ahead and put uh, just a little bit of thread locker on these. Don't go nuts. Just put a little drop on there. So let's put this on, let's get these snugged up, and then put your belt back on at this stage of the game. It's just going to make life easier on you. These two are at 20 foot pounds. So next on the list right here, we're going to be reinstalling this. Now. You're going to have to come back in with the shroud and the fan at the same time. Kind of set this down so it doesn't wreck your radiator. Put the two bolts in for the shroud. Now there's a trick to this. You already put your belt back on. With the key off in the truck, in park, manual transmission, in neutral. Get yourself one of those lone wolf starters. Hook it up to the starter, or on this model right here, we would jump the wire to the battery, or jump your solenoid, and just hold it at the top. Don't be given a good grip, but just hold it at the top, and just kind of Bump, bump the starter, bump the starter to turn the motor. It'll put this on just beautifully. If you don't want to do that, you're going to be turning it on. It's going to take a little bit. They, they are a little bit of a bugger to turn on. In my particular case, I'm lucky because I'm doing it without the cab and I don't have anything in my way. But that's one of the tricks right there for you. Now, once you get this installed, then it does need to be tightened up. And that again, you can uh, take a large wrench, hit it with the hammer, give it a good shock, do it a couple times so you know it's nice and tight. What we don't want to have happen is to leave it on there loose, start up the truck, and then she comes unspined and 
blows out your radiator. You can come back in here with the chisel and kind of brrr, tighten it up just a little bit. Don't get crazy because we don't want to bust that nut. You know, if you go through with that chisel and you chisel too hard, you're going to end up busting that nut. You just want to lightly, just not full air, just, you know, quarter air, just a little bit, da -da 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 and tighten it on up. So from here, basically just do the rest in reverse. You know, you have the radiator, radiator tubes, pipes to put back on. Uh, everything else needs to be put back together. Uh, there's just some basic things that, you know, a guy just does not need to go through. If you're going to jump into this job, you know the rest of it. So, as a side word, uh, just so everybody's aware, if we've been having conversations back and forth via through the comments, YouTube a few weeks back decided to change something and, jeez, I am not getting notified of uh, any of the comments that are coming through. Uh, notifications aren't working properly. It's difficult sometimes for me to go back and find what video that uh, you were making your comment from and asking your question. So basically everything was lost due to whatever YouTube changed. And most of the, like I said, most of the notifications I'm not getting anymore. So I am looking into my comment area on my side, uh, trying to respond and get caught back up. But that's what has been going on if you're sitting there wondering why. But I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day.